Back. Two new independent studies by British and French researchers both reveal that widely used insecticides could be behind the decline in the number of honeybees and bumblebees. The general assumption was that pesticides were to blame for the apparent bee decline. But until now, scientists had no clear evidence to suggest how they harm bees. Both studies looked at the effects of a commonly used pesticide sprayed regularly on crops since the early 1990s. The UK study treated one enclosed field of bumblebee colonies with the insecticide and one without. After six weeks, they discovered the weight of the treated colonies was on average 12% lighter than the control colonies, suggesting less food was coming in. Treated colonies also produced 85% fewer queens. The French study tracked free-ranging honeybees with tiny radiofrequency microchips. They gave some of the bees a sublethal dose of a pesticide. The treated bees were up to three times more likely to die whilst away from their nests, possibly because the pesticides interfere with their homing systems. A population simulation predicted honeybees exposed to the pesticide would never fully recover. DEFRA says it will look at any new research, but claims all the evidence thus far shows the pesticides used do not pose a threat to honeybees if used correctly. Joining us now from Glasgow is Steph O'Connor, a researcher from Stirling University who helped lead the British study. Steph O'Connor, uh, the, the ministry seem institutionally resistant to your... Um, to your findings. They say they will look at new research, but, but they put in that rider that the pesticides have to be properly used. That sounds a bit weaselly. Um, yes, well, there's, there's been a lot of evidence uh, research carried out in the past, um, and so far there hasn't been anything conclusive that has shown that these tiny trace field realistic doses that we apply to these um, colonies of bumblebees um, will harm them. Uh, and all of the previous work that's been done on bumblebees has all been in uh, lab studies, so where bees have just been in small enclosures or in small cages, um, and it hasn't hurt them very much. But when we, what we actually did um, was to dose them for two weeks with, with tiny, tiny trace doses of um, a mitocloprid, one of these neonicotinoid insecticides in their pollen nectar in the lab for two weeks, and then we'd place the colonies outside just to freely forage. Um, and, and that's, so we, this is the first study that's shown um, in a kind of field realistic environment uh, how damaging they can be. Well, the most interesting thing from the French research is that they seem to be able to pinpoint that it may be their homing uh, systems that are most damaged by pesticides. What's your, what yes. are your thoughts? Is that um, the that same That seems with very yours? likely. It, it seems very likely. Um, that's what past research in these lab studies that I mentioned has kind of hinted towards that it's going to be something to do with uh, navigation systems um, and foraging ability that's impaired. Uh, our study didn't really look at the um, mechanisms um, that are causing the, the, the problems and to some extent it, it didn't really matter. It would be you know, very good to, to know this obviously but really we just wanted to know the final outcome. Right. How well, do they affect bees? Uh, I mean the, the bee is an absolutely structural part of the ecology for pollination yes. and all sorts of other things. Um, is there not now a serious case for the government to fund a much bigger field trial, possibly both sides of the channel? Yes, definitely. I, I think that's, that's probably what I would like to see. Um, our work, as far as we can tell, has been, you know, it's conclusive. It's, it, it, it's such a stark difference in queen production between these uh, control colonies that weren't uh, treated at all with the, with the chemical and they were producing around 13 new queens per colony. Ones that were treated were producing around one and a half to two queens per colony. So it's such a stark difference but yes more research could be carried out but we would like to see it carried out on colonies of bumblebees and hives of honeybees and in wild conditions in the right. field rather than in small cages in the lab. Steph O'Connor thank you very much indeed for joining us.